to automate your CI and CD workflows. One of the things that was recently added is the ability to target environments for your deployments. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at CI CD workflows inside of GitHub. Yeah. So as I was saying, this is a new feature with GitHub Actions where uh, we have the ability to uh, split our our deploy our workflow into these different jobs. We can see I have one running here that's split into three different jobs, um, which is kind of like the stages of the the build. So the first one is to just build the app. The next one is to deploy it to the development environment, and then the one after that is to deploy it to our beta testing environment. And it's kind of working its way through here. And what we're going to do is just take a look at how this was configured, the way this was built originally, this workflow for the two weeks ready product project. I'll link to the repo so that you can check this out yourself. Uh, but this was all set up as just a single, it wasn't split into jobs previously. So uh, we just had the different tasks that would happen as part of the build. And uh, for a PR build, we would do the build step, uh, uh, but we would kind of skip that deploy step if we were in the if we weren't in a pull request, if it was actually a merged master. That's how we were doing the continuous deployment to the dev environment. Uh, and we didn't have the concept of a beta environment. And when I was asked to set up that beta environment, that's when I started looking into this fe these features to split this up. Um, so first of all, let's just take a look at how I set up the environments. So that's under settings. And you do have to be an administrator for the project to see this, but there's an environment section here. And that's where you can click new and just define your environment. So you just give it a name and then you're able to configure it. I'm not going to create a new one here, but we can see that we have our development environment, which doesn't require any reviewers. Uh, and then we have our beta environment, which I have set to required reviewers. So we'll, kind of, we'll see how that affects the, the process here in a minute. You can also tell it that it's only allowed on certain branches. So deploying to that beta environment, I only allow that if we're uh, running on the master branch. And then you have the ability to find your secrets here. So I have some secrets for my front end and an ENV here. And then I have my Azure credentials, which allows me to deploy to the Azure environment. Uh, I, di I didn't have that defined in the development environment. Uh, the way this works is that we have secrets. This was the feature that was always there with uh, GitHub Actions. So I have my Azure credentials defined there as a repository secret. That's the one that no, that is able to deploy to the resource group for my development environment. Um, and then when I'm in my beta environment, the environment specific secret overrides that other one. So when I'm running in a job that's under that's targeting that envir particular environment, it's going to use the secrets from here. And if there aren't secret, isn't a secret by that name, it'll default back to the repository level secrets. So that's just setting up the environments, but then how do you use them within your workflows? Well, let's go take a look. So under my dot work or under my dot GitHub slash workflows here, I have two different workflows defined. We're just going to look at the API for today. So this is the API uh, dot YAML. It runs anytime there's a push to the master branch or a pull, there's a pull request to the master branch. Uh, and there, I have some path filters here so that it's only running uh, when it's something within the API folder that changed. And then this is where we've split it into jobs. So previously I didn't have this jobs level in the YAML file here. It was just uh, the steps that were, were defined. Uh, but what I do here is I, I define, split it up into the jobs. So I have my build, I deploy to dev, I deploy to beta. So my build, what it does is it goes and just sets up .NET Core, runs .NET build, does .NET publish. Um, and this is an Azure Functions application. So what I'm doing is then zipping it up. So just calling zip to, to zip up that publish folder. And then I'm uploading that as an artifact of my build. Um, and also including uh, shell script that I forgot about. So two files that get uploaded to artifacts, the zip file that we want to deploy, and then a shell script that I can use to, to automate that deployment. 
Um, so I'm going to open this in a new tab so that we can go and look at that one that was just running. We should be able to see right here. There should be some artifacts. Why don't I see them? Artifacts. That's unusual. Status waiting. Artifacts are there because it used it in the deploy to dev step to actually do the deployment. It's interesting. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll come back and see if that shows up in a bit. But uh, the deploy step then, the, for that first deploy step, uh, we again, we set it up so that it runs on Ubuntu latest. It's, running on the same kind of VM. Uh, but the, the things that are different here is that it says it needs the build to finish first. So it, re it depends on that first job to run. And then we, we tell it what environment we're running on. And I also tell it to skip this if, we're, uh, if we happen to be running as a result of a pull request. So with pull requests, we don't want to do the deployment to the dev environment. Um, so we skip that. And as long as our build succeeded, then it will run this. First thing it does is just downloads those two artifacts that we defined, that we uploaded. Does an Azure login, that's where it's referencing my credentials. Um, and then it just runs that script, uh, passing in the deployment, the zip file. And that script just does a, a, I can't remember what that script does, we'll have to check later. But it's doing, a, I think, just an easy deploy to the function app. And then the deploy to beta ends up being basically the same steps, uh, except it needs deploy to dev. So it's dependent on deploying to the dev environment first. We target the beta. And then we're just passing in a couple extra different parameters here to that uh, deploy backend.sh script. And these could be done also as environment variables so that I wouldn't have to have it like in there. But this works. So uh, let's take a look at where where it's sitting now. So you can see that it did deploy to the dev environment successfully. We can kind of look in here and see that it it uh, it did run and it yeah, deployed to Azure Functions for me successfully. But this deploy to dev or deploy to beta step here, job is um, says review pending. So I can come in here and because I'm configured as a, a person who has the ability to approve these, I can say, optional here, but now I can approve and deploy to that environment. Mm -hmm. And off it goes. Now normally, so that's going to queue up and, and go now, it says it is deploying. And you do get the history of who, uh, who did the approval and when. Uh, and usually you do see the artifacts here. It's strange that it's not there, but you have the ability to download those artifacts. I'm going to go back and look at an older one and just see if it's there. So this one, I think I deployed beta. Yeah, see, it's showing the two artifacts in this case. And maybe it doesn't show it for some reason until they're all done. That would be strange. Because there are times when I'd want to see those artifacts before I actually do the deployment. But um, you can see the script and the, the deployment zip are here as artifacts of that build. That's a little strange that that's not showing up. But see if that deployment is done. Just take about a minute to, to actually do the deployment up to that environment. I'm curious if the artifacts are going to show up after that's completed. I have a feeling there's something strange going on here with uh, GitHub Actions just at the moment. So this is fairly reminiscent of the multi-stage build inside of Azure DevOps as well. It did show up. That's strange. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't look to me like it's maybe as mature yet as what's in Azure DevOps. I mean, not that I felt like what was in Azure DevOps was particularly mature either. Yeah, you're right. It It is, like you said, a reminiscent of that, uh, but it's not doesn't feel quite as mature yet. Um, however, for a lot of scenarios, it's enough to, to do what you need it to do. Mm -hmm. The piece that was really missing previously was that ability to do environment level secrets. 
So having that in there kind of opens up a lot of possibilities to make this work. Um, but you're right, it's it's not quite as, call it feature complete, as the multi-stage builds. But I'm looking forward to where they take it from here now that they kind of have the, the base set of functionality in place. Yeah, because I can envision a lot of scenarios here where you want to have fairly advanced kind of approval flows around dispatching things out to different environments. So not just like a single person to approve it, but maybe like a chain of people would approve it. Uh, yeah. Those are the sorts of things that you see in like highly regulated environments, banking, healthcare, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, if the, yeah, there if the approvals were at the diff dependent on the different environments, you could kind of chain them together. But yeah, there's definitely scenarios here where it wouldn't quite mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't quite work yet, but it's getting there at least. Yeah, I mean, I you can come up with an arbitrary amount of crazy complexity with that. Like, you know, normally Bill can approve it, but if Bill's on vacation, then please delegate that particular approval to Sandra, and there needs to be at least one other person from the security team who's approved it, sort of stuff. Or it gets mm -hmm. very complicated. Um, so I don't know how people are doing that. I'd be interested to see if people are doing automated builds and environments like that, how they manage to set up those approval workflows. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I know that like previously the the guidance from GitHub was more around you would kind of spawn an issue and then it would you would trigger things based on comments on that issue or specific people replying to the issue and closing it, um, which was a very like github -y way of, <laughs> of approaching the problem that wasn't very familiar to folks that were working in more of those enterprise environments, like you said, where things are fairly regulated and, and they have very defined workflows that they need to follow. Yeah, it definitely felt like uh, you know, pull requests are a hammer and everything looks like yeah. a hail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is a welcome change, and it uh, it didn't take me too long to get this working in this specific example, so I was pretty happy with it for what we were trying to accomplish here. Um, one weird issue that we had was that environments wasn't available here for us for the longest oh. time. Ended up having to open up a support issue with GitHub to find out why, and it was because this particular organization was on an older style of plan. And uh, somehow this feature lighting up is linked to the type of plan that you're on. So the solution was to move to a free plan and then the feature <laughs> was available. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you can do more complicated orchestrations in this too, right? Like you, you've got a very linear workflow here. Yes. But you could yeah. have this go out to multiple different environments or do multiple different stages in between and have yeah. like several different builds that each one produces different. Uh, artifacts that end up being gathered and deployed in later stages. Yes. So one of the things that I am looking to play around with on this one is setting up like a, a bit of a less linear flow where uh, I'm gonna I'd like to after the dev one set up a job that does a playwright um, mm. automated test. So, so like some automated browser testing using playwright. But I don't necessarily want to have the deployment to beta depend on that, um, at least not initially. So in that case, this would kind of like fork off here, and you would see the the automated playwright test would happen automatically after the deployment dev happens. But we would still have the ability to trick to approve a deployment to beta at any time, even if the that test happened to fail. Oh. Lots of fun stuff to play with. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us on this week's episode. Remember to like, comment, and share. Uh, or you can just set yourself up a workflow to do it automatically every time we publish something. I'll leave that up to you. See everybody next week. Bye.